so uh, like yesterday i have shown like uh, how we can manage our uh, infrastructure means like to practice or to install some particular tools on our virtual machine we have seen everything right uh, we have created a vm we have created vm manually and we have created a vm through a vagrant tool okay it takes some time to understand how this vagrant nothing simple actually so just only thing is like you have to understand what are the parameters i need to write in the vagrant file that's it uh, after that you can see the vagrant commands you will get some list of options by understanding the uh, description of the particular option itself you can understand what it is trying to do exactly okay so uh, you don't use too many options in that actually you use only vagrant up vagrant destroy or something like that to clean up everything and all so now uh, what we want to do is nothing but let me show you the gcp account like how you need to create an instance to install some docker or uh, kubernetes and all right now i'm only showing you how to create an instance in that how will, will you install your uh, uh, packages like packages whatever you want for your uh, uh, tool to be running up and running okay so this is my gcp account so let me uh, log into that console.cloud.google.com that's a url okay so you need to give your email address here and password as you know so this is the right choice for persons who doesn't have the local setup uh, to practice like to create a virtual machines and then to run the tools and all the better solution is try to create a gcp account uh, i will show how, like how, what are how you need to create a project how we need to update the uh, card details and all how to do it and all it's written in a separate session okay so this is how you see once the activation is done it will take immediately it's like it it will initiate immediately once a uh, card verification and the they detected the amount like one rupee which i have told us today so once it is done you will get activated so once it is activated right you can just click on this left window you will see some multiple services which are given by your google cloud in that in the compute section you can see something called compute engine right so this is what you have to click so this is nothing but this is a service which is provided by the gcp account for you to create a virtual machines technically in the cloud it is called as instance whether you take aws or whether you take uh, gcp or whether you take azure these are technically in cloud it is called as instance normally we call it as virtual machines but in the cloud side it is called as instance okay i already created two instances here for my kubernetes setup actually which i'm using for the next batch okay so daily i used to start this i used to show them like what need to be done on the kubernetes for each and every um, uh, what do we say discussions and then once each class was done i used to shut down this particular uh, instances actually that's how i do so that's how i can save my money as well whatever that was credited by google i can save the money in a proper way so that i can use it for the longer time anyway it is not more than one years one year actually but still i can manage right so that's the reason so now how to create an instance now let's say i want to install docker so how to create an instance in this particular gcp account so create instance okay so here you need to give some name to your instance okay let's say docker Ubuntu. okay so now uh, after this label it's up to you but i don't uh, prefer this labels right now it's not needed and this is nothing but region and zone zone in the sense availability zone you know right uh, means data centers okay in let's say we have so many uh, regions actually let's say you are staying in us and you are new at you uh, let's say you are near to your us location okay then it is better to choose that particular reason why because the communication will be much faster the api calls and whatever the things you try to run it will be much faster okay so let's say i'm staying in mumbai uh, let's say near to mumbai that is one of the data center which is provided by your gcp so i would select that okay so you have to search for that asia pacific and then let's say there is a mumbai region delhi region as well okay which is nearer to me 
for me it is near it is mumbai right so i'll be selecting this okay and and you can select the zone as well so they will provide you three different zones zone in the sense that is actual data centers okay let's say in mumbai itself i can set one data center in pune or mumbai or nagpur or something like that these are called as zones availability zones okay mumbai is a region okay so that's how it is okay so uh, anyway i will go with the default but i'm just saying you that we can also go with this particular uh, settings section so um, let me go with this sorry So I'll be going with the default settings. I'll not be using Mumbai region because I don't want to uh, create here and there. Why? Because uh, I want to create in one location. So that's the reason I'm going with the default settings. This is the region and this is the zone which I'm using right now. Okay. So here the name is Docker. Okay. So now after this machine configuration, which means that how much CPU and how much RAM you want for that particular virtual machine okay so let's say it is a general purpose i'm not using like compute optimization or memory optimization so compute optimization in the sense they will concentrate more on cpu details okay they will try to use more of cpu memory optimization in the sense they concentrate more on ram okay so i am general purpose so i'm not too much worried about compute or memory or gpu okay it is for general purpose so here you can see this is the series okay we have different series of uh, what do we say uh, flavors we technically we call it as okay so in this i just want for 2g uh, 2 vcpus and 8 gb of ram that would be sufficient for me more than enough for me to run my applications in docker okay so i selected this one 2 vcpus and 8 cores memory okay 8 gb memory and after that here boot disk means which operating system you want which iso you want to use for that instance so here i want to change why because i don't want to use debian so change so here i will be changing from debian to ubuntu where is that select that you can see we have sent OS, okay container optimized OS, deep le uh, learning on linux federal red hat rocky linux sql susi ubuntu ubuntu pro and then windows server okay so whichever you want you just select the operating system in that we have we will have different versions i told you right in ubuntu always we will try to use even numbers versions and then that to lts long term service okay here automatically it selected 16 but i want 20 20 lts version you can see here okay amd64 focal image okay so just select that what should be the size of the disk okay so here i can just allocate uh, 100 gb not 100 gb let's say 50 gb is enough right now so 50 gb or let's say 60 it's enough and then select okay so this is done allow default access that's fine and then uh, traffic firewall which means that if you want to connect to your instance from outside or if you want to open some port number right now i'm not too much worried about security so i will allow all the http and https connections right now okay and then create so 80 port number and 443 port number will be allowed to be connected to this particular instance so it is getting created it is not that tough just a simple clicks that's it Once the instance is ready, we will try to log into that and then we will try to install Docker. Okay. Creating this GCP account, it's so easy. It's not that tough. Anyway, we will have automatically this Gmail account. The only thing what we have to take care is uh, how to add this particular details, your card details. That's it. Uh, creating VM Ubuntu it's boot disk even to what it is trying to say operating type failed the message quota exceeded limit is 250 in the region of us east one okay so there is quota issue so as per my free account they are not allowing me to uh, allocate that 50 gb of uh, quota to this okay so then what i can do is nothing but let me do in another way let me try to create in mumbai region so right now it is having quota issue right let us do in that way so docker 
uh, let me see AGB. Everything is same, but here it is Mumbai region. For example, Mumbai region, and then whatever availability zone, I'm, I I don't worry too much about it. So let's scroll down. I changed it AGB of memory, and then here I need to change with um, Ubuntu. And then 20.04, and then here 60 GB, and then let's go ahead select. After that, allow traffic firewall create. I think they have changed a lot of what this quota. Earlier, we used to allocate 100 GB, 150 GB, they it used to accept, but now they added some quota limitations. So let's see. So it is created you can see here okay in order to log into this this is the public ip and this is a private ip so always the better solution what i do is like i used to open in the browser okay no need to do some ssh key storing it and doing that ssh again this public ip will change okay this public ip is not constant whenever you reboot your system in this instance automatically this ip address will change if you want to use a fixed ip that is a bit costly okay costly in the sense more credits will be utilized when you try to uh, use a fixed ip address called as elastic ip address so we are not that too much worried about public ip right so i'm okay so that's the reason i'm using only uh, this one a browser to log into this particular virtual machine you can see this okay now switch to the root user simple after that it's ready now, as uh, uh, always, I used to tell, right, whenever you log into your Ubuntu machine for the first time after it is booted, just execute apt update command so that your apt database will get updated with the repositories. Always, it is mandatory. Okay. And the next command which I used to tell apt dist upgrade so that all the packages will be upgraded to the latest version according to the repositories. On your operating system that's how it will get okay now go back to your official documentation of docker and search for Ubuntu uh, docker Ubuntu right docker install Ubuntu. this is the official documentation just click on that yesterday we have opened right similar to that and let's verify this one it's not mandatory but yeah let's cross verify So no packages so well and good so no uh, nothing to worry too much about this after this we need to install the minimum packages needed to go forward okay to execute next commands these packages are mandatory among this only one package is not available and as i told you right use apt auto remove to remove it they are telling you that there is one package you can see this particular statement okay when you are completely new to this linux right try to understand the output of this particular commands now you can see the following package was automatically installed and is no longer required and this is the package name if you can do some r and and see like which package or uh, generally which which tools will use this particular package and all you can do some r and d now they are telling you that use auto remote to remove it okay simple apt auto remove simple command automatically it will remove the package which it has displayed you can see here the package got removed simple okay so these are the general things which we do so anyway sorry i am re-executing but yeah all the packages has been installed what is the next command we have to execute as i told you it's a gpc key since we are using the open source tool so we need to download the gpc key onto our system okay so that whenever it is downloading the packages from that particular repository which we are using for uh, docker it will use this particular key to verify and then it will accept and then it will download your packages okay without having this particular key 
you cannot contact to this particular repository and download the packages okay that's one thing you have to remember so copy this one so this command will add a repository entry in the file as i told you yesterday like all the repositories will be created under apt source.list if you want to create a separate file source.list.d this is where your docker list has been created okay the main thing how to identify the source like uh, repository uh, files are nothing but always it should end with dot list okay that's one thing you have to remember so for kubernetes we created a separate uh, repository called kubernetes dot list that's how it is okay so it is so simple why because instead of writing in a single file and searching for that particular parameters if you write in a separate file if you want to remove that repository i can just remove that file no need to worry which line and all this will simplify your job and it is easy to handle so that's the reason always i recommend whenever you are adding a new tools repositories to your operating system create a separate file don't mess in the source dot list which came from the operating system iso okay so that's a better practices okay as you all know once again whenever you add a new repository into your ubuntu operating system always it is mandatory to run apt update command okay after this now i am good to go and install the packages right so just copy this and just paste it control c and control v will accept okay oh, this is fine Done. We are almost successful. Okay. Done. Docker was installed successfully. Okay. So Docker was installed. Everything was running successfully right now for us. Okay. Generally, if you want to know the Docker information, what are the default settings of your Docker? always i recommend to execute a command called docker info okay it will show you what are the default settings you are using how many images you have you, you are downloaded right now zero nothing actually and what is the server version which means that what is your docker version 20.10.8 okay and what is the storage driver overlay 2 i will tell you what is this exactly uh, can we change this particular storage driver yes we can change at any point of time uh, that is like we have to do some particular we, ne we need to follow some steps. Okay, so I will explain that how to change this particular storage driver and first of all you have to know What is the storage driver? Okay, it does for you and then log driver which means that it is a JSON file C group driver I will tell you uh, when we discuss about that and if you want to see uh, How many containers are created and all nothing has been created why because it is a new machine right now We have installed just now, right? So that's the reason you don't see any other parameters and these parameters which you see after this these are related to your host operating system your where you have uh, your ubuntu operating system related information kernel version operating system version os type architecture cpus total memory name id docker root directory so what is this docker root directory so docker root directory in the sense all the docker related information how many containers you create each container related information how many images you download all the image related information volumes networking everything each and every information related to docker will be stored the data will be stored under var lib docker this is the default location whenever you try to install the docker for the first time you get the same location everybody it's not specific to me or someone okay everybody will see the same root directory can we change this yes we can change it at any point of time but this is the default location okay and one more point is nothing but registry so registry in the sense from where you will download the images okay so if you look at the diagram of your docker let's say for example this is your docker host machine which means that where you installed your docker server right docker host which is nothing but docker server is running okay Install. once it is installed how you can confirm that your docker is installed okay i executed docker cli command and i was able to fetch the data that's fine 
but technically you have to verify with the service this particular docker service will be running in the background okay in linux operating system in the windows also so many services will be running in the background right how will you see either you will open the task manager and you will see what are the applications that are running in the background right so in ubuntu uh, in linux operating systems we use this command is common for any linux operating system so system ctl status okay status of what your docker service so docker hyphen c sorry the docker that's it now you can see your docker service is running in the background what is our what is this called daemon daemon in the sense a service which is running in the background is called as technically it is called as daemon d a e m o n we call it as daemon daemon in the sense a service which is running in the background service is nothing but not simple a process id will be created your cpu will be handling that particular process simple right if you see a psaux command you will see so many process running in the background but if you want to filter only related to docker you can see i am using grip command this is the actual command in this i will get lot of output but i want to filter only a specific one so for that i gave pipe symbol and then grip and what is a what is a, uh, a string you want to use to filter so docker is if you want to simplify more you can just give docker d so now you can see this is the command which is running in the background so you can see this one here as well see daemon is nothing but it will ensure that this command is running in the background by using this process id if you kill this process id your service will get stopped okay now if let's stop this particular service and see what are the details that we can fetch from the docker cli command now if you look at this particular uh, grep command you don't see the docker service running okay even if you execute this system ctl status docker you don't see anything is it is inactive you can do this see this okay now if i execute docker info command it's working okay if i execute docker ps command it is working let's verify why because it is automatically started you can see this right did i mentioned anything to start no it got automatically started why because this particular service will have a configuration file in the configuration file it is written to restart whenever you see that there this particular service is stopped automatically it will get started because if you want to know where is the configuration file to see the changes or to, to see the settings of this particular service you can just see here okay this is the configuration file okay you can just use some editor and try to open this file you can see this editor uh, let me open in a proper editor so that you will get proper view now you can see it is better right now you can see here restart second says two restart you can see which parameter is trying to restart always uh, all the time even though if you try to stop it it will see whether the service is running or not if it is not running automatically it will start okay so that section is nothing but this one so since you added this one so the service will get automatically started okay if you say never if you try to stop it okay it will never start you have to manually start it okay so that's one thing you have to remember so let me add something like never just save this and come out now after doing some changes in this file we have to run a command called system ctl daemon reload and after that let's try to start the service docker service okay now check the status it's running that's fine okay ignore never okay now let's try to stop I think there is some issue with this failure to pass the server restart specified. Okay, let me open this file once again. And then, sorry, let me come out of this. Let me try to stop this. It stopped.
you can see this system ctl uh, system ctl commands related parameters here okay anytime if you want to see the details what commands what options you need to pass and all always try to read the man page okay we have the man page here you can just read into this particular man page okay um you can see the command status okay uh, clean kill okay isolate we have start stop okay enable show okay we have so many other options which we can use it in this particular uh parameters actually okay so uh yeah you can see this particular table which shows few information you can just whenever you get some time you can just open this and you can just read it okay you can see it is not started okay okay so let's try to execute ps command not able to fetch the details image ls because the service was started again okay so this is happening because this is not a valid parameter so let me try to add a valid parameter here oh something went wrong oh uh, it is asking you uh is being edited by root yes yes i want to just edit it by root so here uh, what is the last parameter we have used always if i try to remove this okay system ctl demon sorry demon reload okay and then system ctl stop docker okay, execute working okay oh i think these are not valid parameters or what um so by default okay okay so by default it is accepting this parameter actually even though if you don't specify this the default parameter is restart is policies always okay i'll just add this parameter okay so that's fine actually yeah. So now uh, this Docker service is getting started automatically. Earlier, what we used to have when you stop this particular Docker service, uh, the default parameter is never to start. So automatically, this particular service you have to start it. Okay. There is one more parameter, though it is enabled. We have to add this particular parameter. That is nothing but system ctl enable the service name. Okay. What this command will do is nothing but this command will add an entry. It will create a symbolic link means it will try to create a link what is the purpose of this is nothing but whenever you tomorrow whenever you reboot your system some services will not get started automatically because they are not enabled okay they are not enabled to boot uh, they are not enabled to start the services when you are booting the operating system okay if you want your service to be started when it is loading your operating system right so when your operating system is getting loaded so many services will get started in the background if you want that particular service to be started this service also should start when you are booting your operating system then we have to use this particular parameter called enable whenever you want you can just add something like disable okay so disable in the sense disable okay so disable in the sense tomorrow when you try to restart okay this particular service will not get started automatically okay so i the recommendation is always to use enable even though if it is added or not just try to execute this command you can see here a symbolic link has been created okay so that this particular services is added into the list of system d okay so automatically this service will get started okay so that is the intention actually so so your docker service is running up and running right now so all the things are working fine okay and this is the network which we have see you cannot see a public ip address in your instance okay this public ip address is attached to your uh, instance it is not available inside the instance that's one thing you have to remember okay if you want to communicate to your instance we can use a public ip but it is not physical exist in your system okay so and uh, and one more thing is that all the component all the instances which you create if you want to communicate with each other always i would recommend to use internal ip okay so that it is secure 
and this IP addresses will not be reachable from outside because these are private IP addresses okay that we can see tomorrow so tomorrow we will be starting with networking part okay so what is IP address what is subnet mask CIDR gateway and all is that really needed for you means yes it is needed as per today's uh, expectation from the clients or from the organization and all it is expected to troubleshoot from your end related to the networking part it's always not related to the networking network engineers where they have to troubleshoot your issues related to network right so we have to troubleshoot the issues like how to uh, send the ip address to your operating system or the instance or a virtual machine what what subnet pass we have to use what should be the gateway what is uh, name servers okay so how to allocate the ip address to your system from the range all these things you have to know that is mandatory nowadays okay that will add an advantage for you as well so if you know networking a bit to handle from on your own that is an added advantage right so it will increase some weightage to your resume okay so that is intention actually so so as we have seen all the types we have created a virtual machines and we have installed docker on our local systems as well as in the cloud okay if you want aws also we can use it aws it is not that tough actually let me open the aws as well the persons who want to use aws account they can use console aws actually uh, so uh, for yeah. this uh, google cloud uh, can we yeah. use address in mobile um, mobic x or uh, i think this, this one uh, right yeah you can use it actually but first of all you you need in order to log into this right there is no username password authentication that's the first yes, thing sir. whether you yeah. use azure whether you use a google or whether you use aws the intention is only to log in with the key okay while creating this instance you have to give your proper key you have to create a key and you have to give it okay so let me show in the aws one of this example okay then no, you can use this basically uh, the uh, pem keys basically the yes, so key. exactly. Yeah. exactly but uh, in google i, I then don't, don't see because you have to go maybe start this instance uh, by yes creating. again see one the problem is while creating the instance itself you have to open that particular parameter since i always prefer to use a browser why because i don't want to exploit this particular keys and all so that's the reason always i use a browser to open my to connect to this particular virtual machine that is far better actually okay. since i'm not too much worried about this if you are really concerned to see this ip address is not constant that's the first thing okay always i need to change it okay so always i don't change it automatically this google cloud will when you stop this this ip address will be removed you will see only this you can see this right okay none when i start this again it will get a new ip address from the pool what whichever ip address is free that will get allocated to my instance so it is not constant action okay so i'm not too much worried about connecting to this particular instance using a public ip if i'm using google uh, like as uh, aws right mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me try to show with this AWS as well how to create an instance. This is also a free account. You can just use it, but you have to be conscious, not like GCP. You have to be conscious and we have to see which services are free in that service, which options are free. Okay. So you have to see that. You have to see carefully with that free tire, which comes under free tire. We generally call it in AWS. Then only you have to use it. Okay. There is a spelling mistake. Uh, then my password oh, there is some wrong password let me just retype yeah i just logged into my aws dashboard okay here also we have regions regions are nothing but simple a data center location availability zones in the sense in that particular data center locations which are the actual data centers okay it may be in i told you right physical location that is called as availability zones region in the sense the actual is a mumbai region uh, us east okay virginia california okay hong kong mumbai okay singapore sydney tokyo so these are like regions in that region see in network also we have right atel geo they call it as right we you come under this particular region you come under that particular region okay so that's a technical term okay now which one, which service we have to use in aws it is called as ec2 okay 
Elastic Compute Service. Okay, now I just want to create an instance. There are multiple locations where you can just try to create an instance. You can see here launch instance. Okay, you can just launch, or else you can go to the instances section and then you can launch instance from here. Okay, so click on launch instance. Here we will have multiple steps actually. It is not simple like Google where you will select the default one and go ahead. But here we need to do some changes. So you can see here only this image will come under free tire. You can you see this? You are eligible for free tire here. Okay. Only this one we have to use. If you select any one of them, see this is also free tire. Okay. You can just see which one is under free tire and that only we have to use. Let's say this comes under free tire. So I can use this one. Okay. Select. After this, it is asking you to choose what should be the image, instance type, instance type in the sense, there it is called as machine type, right, in GCP. Here it is called as instance type, which means that how much CPU and how much memory. In the free tier, you will use only this one, T2 micro, free tier eligibility is only this one, one CPU and one GB memory. Actually, this is not sufficient. But still, that's the reason I will not use GCP account uh, like AWS account to show for the practice to 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 practice your uh, tools and all. Why? Because it is only one GB. With one GB, you cannot run too many applications. Okay, or you cannot form your Kubernetes cluster. It's not at all sufficient. Minimum two GB is recommended, and minimum two CPUs are recommended. If I try to select this one, what will happen? They will charge. Okay, they will charge on hourly basis. Okay. So that's the reason I'm not I don't want to uh, create too much uh, Impact on my billing and all so that's the reason I will go with free account. Okay now Without going to this particular sections you can directly launch an instance section you can preview and launch But if you want to see what are the other options? What are the other stages you get in order to select your proper virtual machine is nothing But you have to go to the next one configure instance details just click on that it is asking you how many instances you want to launch you do you want to create two to three instance with the similar settings then you have to give your number okay and then what are the other important parameters are it is using vpc default vpc and in which availability zone you want to use let's say this availability zone okay so in this availability zone we have 4091 ip addresses so which is more than enough for us okay and auto sn public ip so you'll get a public ip address which you'll get assigned so these are default settings. I'm not too much worried about it. Let's say if you want to install Docker, you can add your script here itself. Okay, let let me show you that. Mm, the simple thing is, let me do in this way. Where is your Vagrant file? Yeah, Vagrant file backup, right? Let's open this one. What I want to do is like I just want to copy this one. This commands, right? I just copy this. Why I'm doing this is nothing but when my instance is ready, okay, I need to have this particular Docker installed. Okay, so I'm just using this. I just need to give this backspaces. This is fine and the IPT, yeah, remove this one and this is also fine. Update I'm doing, so that is fine. And we are trying to remove the old packages, that's fine. User data in the sense, I'll tell you what is that exactly. So user data in the sense, once the instance is launched, do you want to run any script okay so that you that is what you will specify you can give as a text here itself if you want to upload some file you can give that file so that file will get executed okay so this is how it is so i am okay and let's add a storage to this storage this is how much amount of disk you want to attach so this is free tire so in the free tire you can use up to 30 gb okay so right now let's say uh, 30 gb we can use only EBS general purpose. So EBS general purpose, we are using it right now. Okay, so that is fine. Okay, and then add a tag. 
so if you want to add a tag you can just add a tag let's say name talk ubuntu okay this is the tag which i added and after that configure security groups which means that uh, which one you want to allow which means that uh, i allowed only 22 port number from anywhere okay which means that from anywhere only 22 port number will be allowed to connect if you try to do some uh, uh, http and https connection it is not allowed right now okay so let us go with the default settings right now why because i want to allow only a such connection okay if you want to allow only your specific ip address means your laptop you can just see automatically this is my ip address right now okay public ip address so this is, will be allowed if you want to customize from anywhere you can just give that from anywhere in the sense you can give this one as well okay so the best way is use custom specify that 0, .0, .0. Okay, anyway, it is warning you should not allow like this, but yeah, for now it's fine. Review and launch now, it is a review in the sense, are you okay with this? All these settings, then go and launch. Here, it will ask you to give your key. I already have a key. If you are creating for the first time, you just need to create a new key and you have to download it. Okay, once you download it, you have to select that one automatically. It will select if it is only one, and now I acknowledge it and then launch instance. So now the AWS instance is launched. You need to go to view instances and here you can see it is getting created. Let's wait. Okay. Until it is created successfully. Say so this is your public IP. Okay. You can just copy this. You can open your uh, this one. Mumbai XTEM, which I have. If you want, you can use putty. This one. SSH give the IP address and the user for this will be a uh, default user I think EC2 hyphen user uh, here we need to add a key right so use private key you have to add that uh, where is my key here I need to have this key actually let me search for that so here it is not listing it Written desktop, no, in my PC users, system. I have in this downloads. Did I create Mr. Toto? Just a second, guys. Sorry, I, I may have missed it. Let me search. Here it is. It's already there. Yeah. So this key was there. Uh, it is in location called EC2, right? So there ec2.pem here it is okay so this is fine it's a pen okay so just see this yeah here it is okay just save it and server refused our key not supported authentication mechanism available server okay let me see if that key is having some problem let me go once again where do you say is it too high from user so this one is fine only thing is like we need to give a proper key let me try to search for that is it created as a text file or what Oh, it's Mumbai and then we have this one. So D access key open. Or else I need to download once again. Okay. Server refuses our key. So this was happened, not supported authentication method available. Okay. So this is not a proper key. I think I just opened it and I missed it. Okay. 
so what we can do is like you can just use that key once it is used right let me use like this this one is not yeah, it should be a ppk yeah yeah that's what see the problem is the ppk file what happened the pem key okay that got messed up actually okay so the extension like this was messed up so that's the reason i was not able to open so what i can do right now is nothing but I can you have the pem key you can go into putty gen and then change it to ppk i can build the ppk right so again i need to open putty putty is not installed again i have to install and all it's something like what i can do another thing is nothing but let's say launch instance okay it doesn't take much time so let me show like this uh, i will go to the preview and launch okay so i'll select this one preview and launch so here what i will do i'll just try to download a new one okay so create a new one i'll just give something like so there let's say ubuntu for example okay now download so so the ubuntu that's fine so it is downloaded here and then after that launch instance okay i'm just trying to see this is the pem key which i have view the dashboard the instances and then it is under creation process this is the one and this is the public ip right now okay so let's go here and let's see over here and then user is ec2 ec2 hyphen user port number will be same and the key will be use key and then here i need to specify that key quick access here if i scroll down i need to say something like ubuntu right so i gave this one and click on ok So now you can see you have successfully logged in okay so i have successfully logged in and i was able to log into my ec2 instance and you can see the ip address what is the private ip address itself okay and if you try to give sudo hyphen i you have switched to the root user and all okay so this is how it is i can just check the connectivity like ping google.com so this is how it is okay so this is how it is only the only concern the only problem with this particular ubuntu is like aws account is nothing but we have to go with free tier. so in the free tier, you don't get too much of options for you to increase the cpu or memory okay so that's the reason always i do recommend or i used to recommend is nothing but try to use gcp account since we don't have any limitation when you are creating an instances so that's the reason it is better go with this okay so right now i have to delete this so just select this and go to instance action and then manage uh sorry, sorry. just instance state and then terminate instances okay just click on this uh okay i am just trying to okay just terminate this instances will take some time to delete okay meanwhile if you have anything like anything which is left right ebs volumes and all if you want you can just need to clean up see this if after deleting the instances if you see this particular volumes just delete this okay so right now it is not needed because it is under deletion process okay so this is how it is here i just need to shut down okay because tomorrow we just want to use this one okay shut down simple shut down shut down in the sense it's like stop what we do so once it is stopped right so i think these are terminated you can see here this instances are terminated right now and if you look at your volumes this has to be there yeah so it got cleaned up so no need to worry so then you can sign out from this particular account okay this is also like is simple to create your account but you have to be extra conscious uh in order to launch your uh, instances and all in the aws okay in gcp it's not like that okay since they are giving you some credit right you have to use in that credit so that's the reason okay so tomorrow we will see the networking part and from the day after tomorrow we will be starting with actual docker uh what do you say uh, parameters and settings okay how to launch your applications what is networking volumes what is docker how it is created what is underlying technology so we have to understand those things okay so that's all for today uh any questions we can stay back
Yes, so the in the real time, uh, are we using Ubuntu or Red Hat? So it depends. I cannot say that we have to use only Ubuntu or Red Hat. It depends upon the company to company. But most of the okay. cases I see, like seventy percent cases are like Ubuntu operating systems. Okay, one among them which is open source. If you want to go for license one, everybody used to choose Red Hat. That's how it is. Okay, if you are choosing for the Red Hat, uh, the installation process is the same, or it is a different. No, the commands will change. Yum install. There we use M install, right? It is a Red Hat family. Yeah, so yeah. for CentOS and Red Hat, it is Yum install. After installation, Docker, whatever the command you execute, it's the same. You already know about it, right? Tools once oh, they are Docker. installed, yeah, Docker commands are same. It will never change. Whatever the platform it is. Okay, okay. fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Ubuntu is like right choice for the new persons, and uh, if you want to go for open source operating system, Ubuntu is the best one. What I see, we are using for our production for our 5G network actually. So imagine like how we are using it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any questions, guys? So just I at least try to create whatever we have discussed. Just try to make your setup ready, whether it is a local system or whether it is in GCP. Just try to create your mi minimal setup, whatever it is needed, so that. Tomorrow or from day after tomorrow, we can practice the session. Okay, don't put it everything on a weekend, so that will create a lot of burden for you, and you will get messed up. Okay, and you will get confused actually. So on daily basis, at least spend for half an hour. Just try to re-execute whatever I executed. That's it. Sundays and Saturdays, you can just try to practice, explore more. But whatever I gave the task, or I will give you a task, right? You can just explore on that and more, and you can do some additional tasks. But at least on the weekdays, right? If you are working, all the guys I think they are working actually. So just try to practice for half an hour. That is enough. Just to replicate, right? What I executed. That's it. So that that will register in your mind. Okay. All right. Um, so there you. are. You have yeah. done the yeah, configuration okay. parameters uh, settings, the configuration file. That yeah. configuration has uh, uh, covered in the Docker's document. Uh, which one you are talking about that SSH configuration and all that? Uh, and parameters also you change in the configuration file, right? In the you are talking about SSH configuration file? No, not that one. The Docker file. Yeah, Docker file and all these are covered in the documentation. So you can have the documentation references. I will share with you. Okay. okay. Since we are not across that right till now, so that's the reason I'm not opening the document. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. For everything, there is a reference document. It is already pushed into GitHub. So I will give you the access to the GitHub, like how to download it. Like it's a public repository. You can just download and you can open the document when you are practicing it. Okay. I will navigate uh, to that particular location where it is, where it is there, and then you can just open that particular documentation from your end. Okay.